Hey, Ray, this is Alex Merced, Developer Advocate at Dremio, and here's another video in this Iceberg Hands-On Tutorial. Okay, so in this video, what I wanna do is just kinda of show you like the kind of things you can do with Iceberg Tables in Dremio, which is pretty nice. Like, um, you have basically full SQL support for Iceberg here. So basically, I can go right in here, and the SQL editor, and I can actually go create a table. So I can say, hey, I wanna create a table. Okay, and I can just say, if not exists. And just like anywhere else, you start off with like sort of the full namespace of so Nessie, which is my catalog. So that's why I'm going to start off with Nessie. I'm going to call the table, we'll call it uh, test2, because I already created a test table when we were in Spark. And then I can just specify the schema. Name varchar for Dremio. It was string back when we were in Spark. And then I can just run that statement. It's going to actually create that table in Dremio. See, and there it is. It's created. I can go to the Minio. And I'm gonna see that that table's now been added to my list of tables. So I click back to warehouse and see there's test two. Okay, there's, it's a metadata that's been created. There's no data in it. That's why there was no data folder. Okay, but then I can go back to Dremio. Okay, and I can inject some data into there. Okay, and the cool thing about, a cool thing about Dremio, so if I were to insert into Nessie.test2, and we'll say values Alex Merced, the cool thing is I can actually run multiple queries. So I can, let's say I wanted to just do this like multiple times. Okay. Okay, so then here we'll have the Pankar Mazumdar. Yeah. Another developer I could hear at Dremi, you've probably read his articles. He's also a co-author on uh, the Apache Iceberg uh, Definitive Guide, which actually I haven't mentioned during this series. So I'll, I'll make sure I mention it again later on. Okay, Jason Hughes, also a co-author. Okay, and Tomer Sharon, also a co-writer and founder of Dremio. Okay, so now if I run these queries, I, again, I wanna make sure my insert cursor, because one thing that this this does is that it's gonna start running from wherever you have the insert, the insert cursor on. So since the insert cursor is there in the beginning, it'll run from the beginning. This way I can control where it starts running the code from. And you can see here, I can see each query running simultaneously instead of me having to like run a query, then change it, then run a query, then change it, which is, which is pretty nice. Okay, and I can quickly like take a look at the results by clicking through here to see what the returned values of those queries are. Okay. And then we can actually go query the table. Select star from Nessie.test2. Okay. And now here, I'm gonna put my cursor right here so that way it only runs and doesn't run, run all those inserts again. It's just gonna run the select query. Okay, you see? Okay, I guess they changed that. Um, cool, 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 cool. And it ran all those again. And then we click on the select to see the results. And you can see there are all the entries that we inserted. Okay, cool. Okay, so you can see working with Dremio is pretty straightforward. It's just writing SQL, you can query it, it runs pretty fast. Um, it's a pretty nice experience. Cool. Um, yes. Now a couple other cool things you can do. Okay. Is I can save these as views. So for example, if I wanted to, um, actually let's first show you that the data does exist inside the warehouse. So if I go back over here, I ref I go back to test two, you can see now there is, and now notice it doesn't put them in a data folder. Okay. So this is something you would have to opt into with Spark with Dremio is gonna be automatic. So what is, it, what is it doing? Okay, they explain you sort of like the benefit of this. What it's doing is that by splitting all the data across multiple hashed folders, regardless of like the way the, the idea is partitioned. Okay, so basically uh, data files are in the same partition instead of them all being clustered in one folder. When you're using things like S3, you run the risk that you have too many requests going to the same partition, which would be under the same folder which is on S3 is referred to as a prefix because it's the, the underlying architecture is not what it seems like file structure wise, um, which can result in throttling. Because what it does is like, it's, it's like a bunch of requests coming to the same folder, it will limit the speed on those. So you can actually end up with bottlenecks when you're accessing data in object storage. But by splitting the data over hashed folders, regardless of partition, um, you don't have all the data in the same partition being clustered by folder because because Iceberg doesn't care that they're all in the same folder because Iceberg, the, where the files are located are listed in the Iceberg metadata. And Iceberg works off the metadata, not off the file structure, the folder structure, which is a really nice benefit of Iceberg. 
So in that case, you avoid that entire problem of S3 throttling when you're using Iceberg. In Spark, you would have to turn on a setting in the table called compatibility mode, and it would do this. And Dremio just kind of does that. It'll just detect based on the catalog you're using and the storage you're using, what's gonna be the optimal way to do it. So it's just gonna be automatic. So in this case, it notices that I'm using an S3 compatible layer. So it is going to automatically kind of write those as a hash. Okay, if I were using like uh, Hadoop storage, um, then it may um, write them, you know, where it creates a data file instead. Because in that case, the, that consideration isn't really there when you're using like Hadoop. Okay, but the cool thing is you have full support here. So again, if I want to delete the records, so like let's say I want to go uh, delete from Nessie dot names. Uh, oh no, Nessie dot test two. Uh, where name equals Alex Merced. I can go run that. So I get full DMS support. So I can run deletes, I can write upserts, I can write merge statements. Um, okay, so delete the two rows because I inserted Alex twice. Okay, and I can I get that fee immediate feedback right there. So this is a really nice intuitive way, a really nice UI when it comes to like working with Iceberg. A couple of things you can do here is notice I have to keep writing Nessie inside the namespace. There's this context window here. I can actually say, hey, the context is Nessie. Okay, so that's gonna be my context. So in that case, I can actually take this off now. Okay, so now if I were to run this again, it's gonna delete zero records, but that's fine. Okay, so it deleted zero records, but it ran the query and I didn't have to write Nessie.test2. So when you have these really long namespaces, Dremio can make it a lot easier because you can set the context of where the query is running from. So that way, you eliminate having to write like long namespaces. Also, I can actually set the context of the branch here. So I can say, hey, I'm working either from this branch or change it to one of these other branches. And again, all that stuff I could do from here as well. So like, for example, okay, here I can just write create branch. I don't have to write in Nessie. Uh, actually, you do. Um, create branch, we'll say, uh, you know, Dremio in Nessie. Okay, and then that's gonna create a branch. Then what I can do is I can then switch over to that branch. So use branch Dremio in Nessie. Okay, then what I can do is, because what it does, it changes for that session. So basically what's gonna happen is that anytime I run a query, that's one session. So essentially when it runs through all the statements that I put here, that's when that switch of branches is, is good for. Um, but I use branch. So now I'm gonna be on the branch. I can insert another record. So insert into uh, Nessie.test2 values. We'll insert Alex Merced again. Okay. And then we will do a count, select count star as total from nessie.test2. Then we're gonna switch branch back to main. Then we'll do that count again. So you can see that the there are two different values. I've again isolated those changes onto a branch. Okay, so let's see it's running through all those queries. And cool, okay, so if I go down here, query, oh, we'll just click on it from here. Okay, so I can see there was seven records from the branch. And then when I go back to last, there's only six records back on the main branch. So again, you can do all that kind of cool isolation stuff pretty easily with Dremio as well. And that's the beauty of Nessie, is like it makes that feature set portable. Uh, it makes your iceberg tables portable. Uh, so you can bring them tool to tool with all these versioning features with them. So, I mean, that gives you a quick tour sort of like of querying uh, Iceberg in Dremio. Um, again, you can go look at the, the uh, Dremio docs, which you can find at docs.dremio.com. So right here, docs.dremio.com to learn more about the kind of syntax you can use in Dremio as far as doing kind of SQL statements that you like.